In the years after World War II, life was extraordinarily hard in places like Monte Cassino. Along with many other ambitious young Italians, Bruno Zoccola's parents emigrated to London. When he left school, Bruno began working on Smithfield Meat Market and over the years has built up a successful business, which now includes the delis and restaurants run by his son and nephews. In spite of being the very model of modern London Italians, they all retain strong links with the family back in Italy and travel back as often as they can. For families like the Zoccolas, now spread over countries and cultures, the annual pig killing has an importance far beyond mere food. All the meat that's been trimmed off the carcass during the day is taken to the kitchen to be turned into sausage meat. The important thing is that they separate the fat from the lean, the rind, and that way you get a, 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 a good proportion sausage. You don't want it to be over fat, you don't want it to be too lean. And you've pretty much turned everybody in the family into it. They're all That's on. right, yeah, they're all in it. <laughs> in January, the countryside's quiet, so this is a, a little bit of fun for them. Yeah. Yeah. They get together, they have a little chat, they talk about what Berlusconi's doing to the country. While the sausage meat is being prepped, the big pieces of meat, the pancetta, the guanciale, and the copper, need to be salted. This is dry rock salt, which will, and it, already you can see it's starting to, um, to leach, where it's changed colour there. It's starting to leach some of the liquid out, and this basically will just suck all the moisture out of it. He really has got the most terrific hands for this. I mean, he's really working it in there. See how the blood comes out as he's massaging it. Look, all that blood's got to come out. So what we do, we put the surplus salt on the top of it now. Oh, right, so he's lying it flat, clear. grind yep. down. Mario takes away the salted meat, which will cure for several weeks. Meanwhile, it's time to salt and season the sausage meat. What an absurd quantity of meat. I think I've ever seen this much in one place before. That's great. We all work together right? So and work in the salt. They use 25 grams of salt per kilo of meat and fat. That's two and a half percent. That's the key trade secret. Okay. A 2.5 percent ratio of salt to meat creates an environment that makes it difficult for bacteria to survive. Once the meat's been properly salted, it will survive the process of air drying. This is wild fennel seed that they actually collect in the mountains themselves. This is sweet chilli, as opposed to the red hot stuff. It seems that real old pros like Mario can adjust the seasoning by tasting the pork raw. No, no. Yeah, I gotta have a try. Frankly, I couldn't tell a damn thing, but he seemed to know what he's doing. With our first batch of sausage meat mixed and resting, it was time to address the insides of the pig. We've got the lungs, we've got the heart, which has been split out to clean out the inside for blood clots. Cool fat here, two kidneys, this is the melt here. We've got a little bit of skirt left over that we trimmed off. And this is the liver I'm going to trim up in a minute. And all of these will be minced up to go inside the figata sausage. This is the diced pluck that right. you saw earlier mm -hmm. with the cool fat, yeah? Yep. That is the rind of three oranges that you picked earlier. Yep. This is chopped apple and garlic. Yep. 25 grams of salt, salt per kilo. kilo. Same Again, as we same proportion as you had before. What I love is the fact that everything we've done has been done by the guys, but this lady comes out for the seasoning every single time. Obviously, this is the magic. We can take her home with us, kidnap her, we've got the whole business. Strangely lovely colour as well. As with any sausage, the best way for us civilians to check the final flavour is to cook up a small batch and taste it. Everyone has an opinion, but Bruno's son Antonio and head chef Massimo get the final word. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. And now we know it's good, it's time to start stuffing. We're using an electric stuffing pump, a bit like a mincer without the blades, and a variety of sausage skins. First up is a length of well-soaked esophagus, which will make a big, thick salami. This is pure generation game stuff. They'll tie it and they'll turn them into smaller salamis, not so big right. ones. Right. Uh -huh. Now we move on to a more regular style casing, a medium sized hog gut. The concentration is, is absolutely intense here. I love it. <laughs> you have what, too much and they split. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something, 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 something,
Do you want to join Link? Going on, on the table, so you're nice and right. Sorry. Okay. 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 Halfway. That's it. Halfway. So twist there at the halfway house. <laughs> okay, and six inches or so down. Small squeeze. So, Bruno, you, you, you could potentially cook these fresh now and they'd be completely delicious. Um, the idea is to let them rest. If you're going to eat them fresh, rest, let them rest for 24 hours. So, this is the, the great flip. Will it? Won't it? I don't believe it! It nearly worked! Okay, and this one. And that did work. Brilliant. Okay, so. Over. And through. Okay, Roberto, la mega is. Okay, and. There she blows. <laughs> I actually did it! I don't believe it! <laughs> Thank you! I shall, I shall wear them around my neck with a badge of pride. <laughs> I was ridiculously chuffed okay. to have done so Far well away. with the salsicci. But the fegato, the liver and pluck sausage, wasn't so easy. So, whoa, here we go. Thank you. <laughs> that one ran away with me. And it really is an unbelievably bright colour when it's inside. Thank you. There you go. Those sausages that are going to be air-dried as salami are moved inside. Bruno calls this a rustic kitchen. It's an outbuilding from the main house with prep space, a small fire, and two big windows with shutters. Are you repairing it? You've made, you've made a plaster out of skin. It's plastic surgery, that's astonishing. There you go. <laughs> the environment is completely controllable, so sausages are hung in warm air for a couple of days until the meat sets and the skins go papery. And then the windows allow a flow of clean, cold air from the valley to complete the drying process over the following weeks. It had been a long and amazingly productive day. It was a privilege to work with the family, and we genuinely used up every part of the pig. Except one. I'd forgotten about the blood. But the next day, Anna showed me how that was used. Ingredients were simple. A pot of water with a touch of bay, some rock salt, some polenta, very finely home ground. A mysterious herb gathered in the mountains that Anna called Chimino, but no one seemed able to translate. Orange peel from the garden, a touch of Anna's home dried chili, and what looks like a gallon or so of clotted pig blood. This is a first for me. I don't think I've ever cooked on a, a, a tarmac layers ring outside in a big tin bucket with a bit of broom handle. But it's, uh, it seems strangely appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> With most blood recipes, you actually have to either use the blood warm or you keep stirring it. Uh, and, and it's very difficult for it not to throw clots, which is what it's naturally supposed to do. This stuff actually clotted it to begin with, and then as it hits the water, it separates. And the fiber in the clotting material has actually pulled it together into this proteinous mass. Um, it's, it's about the consistency and texture, actually, of liver. It's quite soft, uh, and, and it's absolutely full of goodness. It just looks a little bit terrifying. After 20 minutes of stirring the cauldron, Anna appeared with a sieve and a washing up bowl. She scooped out the clotted material, which was quickly spirited away to the kitchen to be fried with onions. <laughs> now here's, here are the herbs going in there. Chimino. 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 This is, um, and the orange, orange peel, the orange peel, which this seems to be very much of this region. And when you can see the oranges out there growing on the trees, you know why. And the smell again coming off is, is fantastic. Suddenly, Anna appeared from the kitchen with another secret ingredient. Bits of pork and cured lardo fried in oil and garlic. <laughs> can, I have, can I have a try? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, can, can okay. <laughs> Apparently, the ancient Spartans used to eat a blood soup like this. But, um, okay. <clears throat> Here it goes. <clears throat> okay, there's. There's a fair bit, a fair bit of chilli in that one. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Quite a lot of chilli. <laughs> While Massimo kept up the stirring, Anna mixed the polenta with a little cold water to stop it going lumpy, and then poured it into the stock. Stir like a devil. Once the polenta had been added, there's nothing to do but stir and chat. Massimo is executive chef at Bruno's restaurants. So on. 
So where do you where do you come from in Italy originally? Because you're not from exactly here, are you? No, I'm not from here. My my parents are from Naples. I right. moved to England about ten years ago. Mm -hmm. Ten years yeah. ago, and then I met Bruno about uh, two years ago. How big is your brigade? It's quite a big brigade. Mm. One we got five chefs, wow. and the other one we got to think eight. Yeah. All Italians? So all Italian. Well, my mum is included. <laughs> your <laughs> mum is still cooking for you. Yeah. That's, so that's where all the secret recipes come from. Yeah. Well, some of them. Some of them. So obviously what we're looking at here is, is great refinement of the texture. Several loads more of the polenta have been slowly rubbed in. Um, I mean, it's starting to be really thick now, and this, this, the light underneath is not very controllable. I think if Massimo stops stirring for a second, it's either going to go, it's going to explode, or it's just going to burn straight to the bottom. But it's, it's, um, it's starting to look very, very porridgey. Let's have a, give, it a, give it a little try. Hold tight. Well, and then suddenly, with no warning at all, okay. it was time to eat. Spingo. Okay. Mm. Beautiful. Mm. Oh, that is really good. Really good. Amazingly smooth. The fat is. Um, the fat spread through it, hasn't it? The colour has become really quite appetising. Yep. Mm. But it's hot. So just do it's with really hot. Some olive oil on top. Yeah, yeah. It's just nice as it is, simple. But as you say, with a with a on the side of a pork stew, or even with, a, with something with tomatoes, it would go it would go beautifully. Yeah, the, full of a taste. Yeah, this for me tops it all off. The whole of the manufacture of all those lovely things from that whole pig we had. And something special about the blood thing. There's always a blood recipe that goes with each kind of pig killing. But this is just fantastic. And the way it fills and lines your stomach, and it's so warming and, 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 and comforting to have. It's the perfect end to a, to a, 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 a long, long, long day's work.